Good morning, kind people of the internet. So today I wanna to walk you through my home music studio and show you how everything is set up in there and show you the gear that I'm using in there. Um, hopefully you'll find it interesting. Um, so this is not a typical recording studio, but um, I think of it more as like a practice studio or just like a rehearsal space. Um, so I do all, basically all of my work in there, all my practicing composing all computer work, most of my video work, all of my video editing. Um, and I actually used to do all of that in this room that I'm sitting in right now. This is the back room of my house. So you might remember this room when I first started doing videos, I was doing a lot of it in here and I had all of my gear sort of crammed in this room. And I have this garage that's disconnected from the house. If you can see right through this window here, there was a big open space in the garage, and for a while, um, I had talked about wanting to find a use for that space, and then I forget whose idea it was originally, but to actually sort of make it into like a rehearsal space that I could use exclusively for music stuff. And so I made a vlog about that when we transformed the garage in that space back um, vlog 100. So if you look back at that, you can see the whole process of how this construction company came in and, and built it out. So I'll provide a link for that as well if you wanna follow up and check out that that vlog. It's, it's pretty interesting, I think, just to, to sort of watch the process. So the music you will be hearing along the way is from the Tucker Brothers group, and this is an album we recorded last year. The album is called Two Parts, and this particular track was written by Joel Tucker, and it's called When Souls Meet. So you're hearing Joel Tucker on guitar, Nick Tucker on bass, Brian Yard on drums, and Walter Smith III, and myself on tenor saxophone. All right, so let's head out to the studio. start with this sidewall over here. So these sound panels from this really great site that I found called Acoustamac, and I got all of my sound panels in the whole room from that site, and they're doing a really great job. And I'd like to get some of the thinner ones to help cut down on the high end of the sound, but these are doing a really good job so far. At the moment, I'm just leaving a bunch of camera gear down here. I've got some chargers. I wanna kinda get this a little more organized. And then I've got a few tripods. This is um, one of the camera lights that I like to use. I usually have the drum set set up in this corner. I've got it packed away for now just because I wanted to sort of use this corner for some more videos. I'm working on a longer video project right now which will be released through my website in the next few months but this corner is good for audio since it's got all of the sort of deadening panels all set up and ready to go. So this amp I actually originally got with my Rhodes keyboard. It's just an old Yamaha and right now I just have it set up on this stand. So if people come over, um, especially guitar players, it's just sort of set up and ready to go for them to start using. And then below that, this is uh, a my very fancy way of traveling and carrying my big band music. Um, and so all the folders for that are in here. My soprano is just sort of hanging out right here. I don't have a great place to store it at the moment, but this is an old toy box that was actually in our house growing up. And I don't know if you'd be able to see this. There are teeth marks on the edge of this when I believe my brother took a spill when we were kids and landed right there on the corner. And then in here, I'm just storing some random things. I have some uh, saxophone stands, um, a microphone, and my clarinet bag is in there right now. All right. These are some uh, posters and some pieces of art that I've been wanting to put up on the wall but have not gotten around to it yet. And then moving over here, this is the upright piano that we actually had in our house growing up as well. And my parents hung on to it and luckily I'm able to use it in here now. So I do probably 90% of my arranging and composing just right on this piano. All right, heading over to the computer station. These are some old JBL speakers. Um, the speakers and this computer are probably about eight years old, but they're still getting the job done. This um, keyboard is a Juno GI, which I'm not actually sure if they make this exact model anymore, but it's great. 
um, especially just for putting together simple tracks at home or uh, also if I'm working on Finale on the computer trying to do a chart, I can use this right at the right at the computer if I'm trying to arrange something. Um, so it's, it's really useful and, and really easy to set up and use with my computer. Um, this, these are really great hard drives. This is a Lacey, really great for travel, um, really high storage, really durable, but yeah, really good. All right, moving along to this other audio gear. Right now I've got this microphone set up. This is the one that I use for my Zoom lessons. So if I'm just talking into this, I like this. Um, it's a little on the brighter side, but I think it's designed originally as like a vocal mic. So this is a Rode NT1A. Um, and I believe it actually came with this keyboard when I got it, it was sort of like a package deal. Um, but good, good microphone. I'm running it into this Focusrite Sapphire Pro audio interface. Um, I've had this for a while as well. Um, still working fine, but this would probably be the first thing I would want to upgrade just because it's somewhat limited in the inputs. And what I really want to do is once I get the, the uh, drum set set back up again over there, I want to be able to mic up the drums and that's going to require a lot more mics and inputs. So I would like to hopefully upgrade that uh, in the not so distant future. Down here, this is um, the preamp that I use for the other microphone that I'm, if, if I'm recording my saxophone. So this is a DW Fern, and this was recommended to me by someone when I heard a clip of uh, a really good sounding saxophone. I was asking him what the setup was like. He said he used this interface. So I use this with my AEA R88, which is the microphone I use with my saxophone. All right, moving over here, this is a Canon printer, um, which is pretty heavy duty, but so worth it, especially um, if you're printing like a lot of music. So for all my big band stuff, I can print a, uh, like a whole big band chart in just a couple of minutes. All right, moving over to this corner, I have a couple of really nice bookshelves set up that a friend of mine custom made for me. Um, he's a really great woodworker and craftsman, and he runs this company called the Iron Slab. Um, and if you're interested in this sort of thing or looking for something like this, I would definitely recommend his site. All right, moving along to the east wall. This is an old Rhodes keyboard from the 50s. Um, I found this on Craigslist. Uh, this is a Gretsch drum kit that I got from a friend of mine. And at the moment I have my tenor set up here. This is just a uh, Selmer balance action from the 30s. So yeah, that is pretty much it. Um, what I'm looking forward to are doing maybe a few upgrades along the way, doing some more sound panels, upgrading a few of the audio recording devices. Otherwise, that is pretty much the studio. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you later.